my name's Anne Marie from Brambleberry.com. Today, I'm going to show you how to make this intermediate soap making recipe. It's based on a tutorial I did back in 2016 that remains one of my most popular tutorials. So I thought it'd be perfect to show you right now on video. Now this is an intermediate recipe. It doesn't mean if you're a first time soaper, you probably couldn't hack it, but honestly, I'd totally go back to the first four cold process soap making recipes on this channel and get the basics of cold process soap making under your belt before you attempt it. Today, because I couldn't quite keep it exactly the same, I am putting a little twist on this watermelon soap and I'm gonna use Brambleberry's Lychee Red Tea Fragrance. And you're kind of like, well, I, what? Don't, like watermelon, why wouldn't you use watermelon? Well, first of all, I kind of like that the lychee green tea really smells like a juicy red fruit, but there's also just a hint of kind of that green freshness that you get from the rind of the watermelon. And I bet you that if you tell anybody that this is watermelon, they will never, ever, ever go, hey, that smells a little tart for watermelon. Are you sure it's not lychee red tea? No way. So I'm using lychee red tea in this, and also I'm using it because it accelerates trace just a little bit. And as you can see, this is a layered soap, and so we want the soap to be harder, faster, so it suspends the layers. A couple other ways we're making this soap a more hard recipe. We're using pomace olive oil, which means it traces more fast than the pure olive oil. We're also using 25% palm oil and a large amount of coconut oil as well. And finally, this recipe calls for a 12% water discount. That's another reason it's an intermediate recipe. What is a 12% water discount? Well, it means I'm using 12% less water than the recipe calls for. So there's less liquids, less fluids in the entire mixture, which means it is going to trace faster, which means I can get my layers faster. Before we get started soaping, obviously we're gonna take safety into account. So, normal rules apply. Closed toed shoes, long pants, long shirt, gloves and goggles and make sure kids and pets are not around and that you have a full well, hour probably to work on this recipe because we want to make sure that you have enough time to make it and clean up because boy those dirty dishes sometimes they look a lot like frosting so little hands might be pretty tempted to just check it out so no kids no pets and full goggles and make sure you are wearing your gloves i went ahead and made my recipe already and mix my lye water. I did put sodium lactate in here because I am using the silicone liner and so it makes the bars release faster from the mold and it does make the bars harder. All right, so everything's mixed. We've got our 12% water discount. I'm pouring gently and evenly into my soap. Not that air bubbles matter in the slightest with this recipe. It's just kind of a habit to pour slowly and gently. And we are going to be layering, but the fragrance does accelerate trace and we do have a 12% water discount. So I'm going to bring this kind of to a, well, kind of a thin to medium trace before I start splitting batches off. So now what I'm doing is just kind of stirring, giving this a good 10 to 15 seconds. So if the trace wants to break or the emulsification wants to break, I'll see it and be able to put it back together before I split off. And you can tell it's about to break because you'll see little, you'll see it be like a little grainy or you'll see the color start going back to more of a yellow rather than an ivory. <laughs> And I could see a very fine color change when I did that. So I knew kind of that trace was, it was okay, but it wasn't as really thick as I wanted, but this is perfect. So now I'm gonna do just about 350 milliliters of soap into these easy pour containers. And I say it every single time. So if you watch my videos very often, you will hear me say how much I love these easy pour containers because of their spouts. They really do make precision work fantastic and additionally they also make pouring low and slow into the molds really nice and easy I have about 350 milliliters in that first container so now I'm just gonna eyeball and we're gonna do two different colors of green to get that variated kind of rind shade and then the rest of this is gonna be our poppy seeds and our magenta color so for our greens we are using 
two different Brambleberry colors and I've pre-mixed them in just a little bit of oil. So for our colorants, I've mixed them already. And what I've done is mixed uh, the Kermit green, one teaspoon of the Kermit green in one tablespoon of a lightweight oil. And then I've just mixed that up and I'm doing two teaspoons of that into here. And I always work kind of lightest to darkest. And then this is our green chrome, which is fantastic to work with. And I'm just going with one teaspoon of that. It's a very strong color. And then the titanium dioxide, I will do in just a minute. And so I'm just gonna whisk these colors in and then I'm going to work on my green and add my fragrance as well. So the total fragrance we're using is just a little over two ounces for the whole batch and go ahead and eyeball it when you add. And I'm hand mixing at this point because I wanna make sure that I have something that is, I don't really wanna glop glop so much as I want to be able to sort of pour in a thick, pour kind of in the thicker as opposed to taking my spoon and glopping, which we'll end up doing for the magenta. You'll, you'll see that for sure. So now I take my five pound mold from Brambleberry with the bottom slider and the silicone liner. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna kind of pour a little bit of green and a little bit of green and just make this a really cool green bottom. And so it's not so much a design as it is just kind of getting the color differentiation in there. And there's a lot of soap left in here, so I'm just gonna spatula this green out here. And then I'm gonna spatula the rest of the green out. And then that green will be totally done. I will smooth this out a little. We are going for a pretty rustic look, so I won't have to smooth it out too much, but I'll definitely give it just a quick tamp down here. So tamp, tamp. And then just kind of smooth. You don't have to do a lot of smoothing, just smooth it out a little. And then you're pretty good. And now it's time to add, and I'm actually unsmoothing just a little bit because I want my layers to be really rustic looking. Because if you look here, this is pretty, this is pretty even. And I kind of want to see what happens when I do slightly more rustic from like I did with the original. So totally personal preference. So now it's time for the white. And here my soap is mostly set up, which is fine. I want this to be nice and thick. And the white gets a full two tablespoons of titanium dioxide. My titanium dioxide, same exact thing. It's been pre-measured and mixed already. We wanna work out any of those small clumps. And the titanium dioxide is an interesting additive because it almost acts similar to a clay in my soap. And so it actually will increase trace or make trace get just a little bit thicker. So that's one of the reasons I didn't pre-do it earlier. And now I'm just gonna do just a little bit of my lychee red tea fragrance, which right now is, you know, everybody's gonna think is watermelon. Gonna stir this in really good, just getting down to the bottom, making sure. And we have, this is really, really, really um, thick. Our green is really thick right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of pour and sort of flood here. And there we go. And same thing, I'm gonna just get the rest of this out. All right, here we go. Get the rest of this out, because of course we don't wanna waste our soap. And there's a decent amount left in there because that trace was pretty thick. And then I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm just gonna tamp down. I'm not gonna worry too much about smoothing this. It's such a thin layer that if I worry about smoothing it, what's gonna end up happening is that I'll break through to the green. Done and done. And now it's time to do our watermelon. So the watermelon layer is really fun and you can see how thick this trace is. Let's see, where are we good? You can see how thick this trace is. Do you see how that like boom, just sort of cut in? That is all of that pumice. And it's also the fact that we use so much palm oil and, tw and that 12% water discount. Glop. So now we do our magenta, and so it's all of the magenta, which is going to help thin trace a little bit, which will be nice. And I'm gonna add my fragrance right now. Nope, I'm gonna add my poppy seeds first. <laughs> because since that 
does increase our trace. I'm gonna add my poppy seeds. I'm going for about a tablespoon. I'm just kind of eyeballing it. I'm gonna stir this in and then I'm gonna add my lychee red tea fragrance. Mmm, this is a beautiful color. Adding my accelerating fragrance right now to a very kind of, well, thick trace. Just gonna whisk that in. Beautiful. And then, because I've got such a nice pourable trace, I'm gonna go ahead and just pour and try really hard not to break through the white layer. And I think that white layer should suspend this pretty well. And if it doesn't, well, I have a second option, but let's just kind of see how we, ooh, perfect. So you notice I'm moving quickly and lightly, and that is to make sure that that white layer doesn't break through and actually suspends the full magenta glory of our watermelon layer. And we have lots of soap left, so I will be spatulaing this out. And so there's a lot left in here, which is totally normal, right? I'm working at such a thick trace. That's to be expected. And then from here, since we have a very thick trace, obviously we can't, <laughs> can't leave well enough alone. I'm gonna have to work on a design for the top that's really fun and really cool. And just get that last little bit out, perfect. So, huh, I love the look of perfectly poured soap. This is glorious. I'm so happy with how this turned out. I don't, ah! I don't wanna tamp it down. I think what I'm gonna do is leave it like this and then start kind of manipulating it and playing with it. I'm gonna take my gloves off because I got oil all over my hands and I'm pretty confident in my abilities to work on this without shoving my hands in there. So I feel good about that. So now I'm just taking a normal spoon and I'm just going to kind of start manipulating my soap batter to get some peaks and it's sticking beautifully. Even though it's quite hot here in the studio, the peaks are really staying and that's partially because of our 12% water discount and also because of the oils we use. That high amount of palm oil is really adding to the stability of this soap and this design. Now another idea for the design of course would be to do a rounded top to make this even look more like a watermelon, but I love how tall these peaks are and so I'm gonna keep it the way it is, but I am gonna do one final touch, which is just a little bit of these wonderful poppy seeds on the top to give the kind of feeling that we just cut into a juicy watermelon and it smells so good and it looks perfect. And I love how this lychee red tea takes the place of that watermelon fragrance beautifully. And now with this, couple options. One, I can spray with my 99% rubbing alcohol to prevent soda ash and put it on a heating pad to force gel. It is so hot in the studio right now though, I'm not gonna even need to do a heating pad, but I will do my 99% rubbing alcohol. And then from there, let this sit for one to two days and it'll be ready to pop out. So I made this soap last week so we'd be able to unmold it. Uh, this soap actually just needs to sit in the mold a couple days at max because we poured it at such a thick trace and it has that 12% water discount and the sodium lactate. So really it comes out pretty quickly. You can tell that I poured it a very thick trace to get this, these kind of plop lines, which is fantastic. I am gonna cut uh, down sideways as opposed to cutting this way because I don't want to drag my poppy seeds all the way down through my green layers. So you ready to see? I can't wait. Smells really good. That lychee tea fragrance is really coming through as just a beautiful red juicy kind of fruit. It's definitely nothing about it now that it's in this design it says, ooh, I'm lychee red tea. So here we go. Mmm, that looks fantastic. I really like how the light green and the dark green kind of just uh, add a little bit of almost texture to it. And then the poppy seeds really do look like, well, watermelon seeds. Oh, I love how each of these bars is turning out so beautifully. It's like a perfect summer soap.
Now, with any cold process recipe, of course, you wanna wait four to six weeks before giving this away or selling this. That allows for a, few, a full cure time, as well as making sure that all the water that was in there uh, evaporates out. So you're left with a really hard, long-lasting bar. Of course, with a 12% water discount, this bar will be uh, more hard faster. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up below. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you're not already subscribed so that every single time a new video comes out, you're notified right away. I'd love to see what you're making too. So if you make this recipe or any of the other recipes from this channel or any of the other designs, please, please hashtag Bramble On so we can all see what you're creating because as a community, we get inspired from each other and I know I get inspired by everything you guys make. So until next time, thanks for watching and happy soaking.